everybody, welcome back to my first HTML and CSS tutorial. In this video, I will be showing you how to create a horizontal navigation bar with a drop down menu. In the last video, where we left off was we had created our logo, we've created our navigation bar. Of course, it doesn't look like a navigation bar and the drop down doesn't work and nothing is stylized, which is why the next thing we're going to be doing is adding some CSS to the code, which we yet need to create. So open your file, go back in the head, and right after the title, create a new tag, which will be our style tag. Close the tag, add a little bit of space there. And this is where all of our styles will go. Now, this isn't really necessary. You don't have to do this, but I like to sort of organize my styles, so I use comments to do so. And the way you comment in CSS or cascading style sheets is slash, then asterisk, and then whatever your comment is, asterisk, and then the same slash like that. But the problem is that we type this in the wrong place. So, yeah, copy that and put it in the style section where it's supposed to go. And if everything is correct and you're using sublime text and you're using this color scheme, then your comments should be a light gray. So under global, we'll begin with body, open and close parentheses. Now what we will begin with going margin zero and padding zero, because automatically all web pages they already have a margin right on the sides like that and that looks it doesn't look very good at all so we want to remove that margin if we re reload the page we should see that there is a difference it did move up and that did move more to the to this edge because we removed the margins and what we want to do next is we will just add a font family font family and for this font you can use whatever you want but I'm going to be using a font I have installed on my computer called Nexa Bold this unfortunately isn't a Google font so if you want to use this font on your website you will have to include it in your website files then that might be a different tutorial but for now if you're just practicing you can use whatever font you like on your own computer without having to use Google fonts or having to include it in your website files. You want to um, change the background of our web page. Don't forget the semicolons after each line and our URL for the background is just the image because it is located in the same place as my website file is and we also want to add some options after this which are no repeat which means it's not going to tile center which means it'll be in the center of the web page and center fixed and the background size we want to change that to cover we want to have it cover the whole web page so save it, go to our web page in our web browser, reload it, and you should already see that we have our background. If we move it, as you can see, our image stays in the center at all times, and it also doesn't tile either. It is perfect right now. And also, you could tell that our font has been applied to these links. So, so far, so good. We want to skip a line. We're going to add a new comment. Navbar. Because the next couple of lines will be for our navigation bar. We want to begin with our drop down. Drop down and the way we call a class is dot. And then whatever the class was. The class of our div was drop down. So dot drop down. Parentheses. Open and close it. And inside there. We don't need to change the font family because we already did it in the body, but we will change the width. We want it to be 100% of the screen at all times. So it will stretch out to 
both edges of the web page no matter how large it is. Display, we want to change that to inline block because we want it to be inline block. The background color, I actually already have a color which is a semi-transparent dark blue color right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste the color in. If you want to use this color, you can. It is a pretty nice color. And I used RGBA, red, green, blue, alpha. Red is 2, green is 50, blue is 96, and alpha is 0.8, which means um, it has 0.8 transparency. It is mostly solid, but there is a bit of transparency. And our last thing we want to do is padding. 10 pixels at the top, 0, 10 pixels at the bottom, and 0. I'm not exactly sure which order these go in, but I know that this one and this one are top and bottom for sure. This one and this one are the sides. So now that we've done drop down, we're going to go ahead and edit our image now. And the way we're going to call our class is dot and then logo image because that is the class of our image. If it's not, then you want to put in your own class because obviously it won't work. Margin, we want to put in 10 pixels because we don't want it to completely top the, we, we don't want it to completely touch the edge of the screen. I'm not really a big fan of that. And the width, we don't have to change the height when we change the width. If you want it to only be 300 pixels wide, you don't have to change the height for it to be proportional. If you notice when we click save, and we reload this, it is 300 pixels wide. See, it's the correct size and it's proportional. It's not stretched or anything, so you don't need to worry about that. Now on this next line, we will be calling the class of our drop-down button, which happens to be drop-down navigation button. We just want to copy our class to make sure we get it correct. Paste it in here, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and we're good. Let's put in our styles right now. The color, we want to be white, so we can see it well. Padding, we want no padding. The font size, I already have a set font size, which I'm going to be using. 20 pixels, the border. You want there to be no border and cursor we want it to be the pointer what we're gonna do next is we're going to go to the next line and we're gonna call the class of a regular button which happens to be regular navigation button again we want to copy that and paste it into here just to make sure that we have the correct class open parenthesis close parenthesis and now we're going to type in basically the same things that are in here, actually. Uh, copy that and just paste it in there. And that should be all. Now let's just save that and look at our web page. As you can see, it made them white and it made them bigger, just like I wanted to. The links inside the drop down are still the same as they were before but we will be editing that soon. On the, next button, on the next line, we want to call the class of our navigation list, which happens to be nav list, and the list item. That is the way you call objects inside objects that have a class. So you don't need to add a class to every single object this way, it's pretty nice. We're gonna type in display, inline block, which should make all the links line up in a horizontal line, just like it says, inline block. In the margin right, specifically, we want it to be 30 pixels, so there's a bit of space between each one of the links. Let's go to the next line and type in dot nav list, link, and our hyper reference. Inside here, we're gonna type in text decoration none, which this does 
is it removes the it removes the underline I believe and perhaps the dots as well and the text shadow will be two pixels to each side two pixels two pixels and two pixels so basically two pixels away from the text to the lower right hand corner just like in this one and it looks pretty nice and the color will be a uh, RGBA color which is basically the same color as the navigation bar except there is no transparency to it now what we're gonna do next is we're going to add a style for just the nav list by itself text text align is going to be center we want the links to be in the center the text decoration we want to be none just as we did before we want no underlines no dots no anything like that and let's just save that and reload our page so as you can see uh, we have our links and they do look just like these so we're good there we have our aquariums and right under it we have Monterey, San Francisco, Coney Island, San Diego so our drop down is right here but as you can see we can see it and it's not styled the way we want it to the way we want it to be so that is what we're going to be doing in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did. The project file should be available to download down below if you're having any issues. If you're having any problems with the code, feel free to comment. If you have any suggestions, feel free to say so in the comments section. And I'll be seeing you in the next video.